Hi, my name is Sherry Kuo, and I'm excited to be introducing our recent publication on DMCN. This study is largely concerned with whether we can use a simple, low-risk clinical phenomenon called mirror movements to understand the underlying pathology in children with unilateral cerebral palsy. This study was conducted between the years of 2013 to 17, and it was conducted at Teachers College, Columbia University. On the lower left side, you can see a photo of our campus here, and these are my co-authors. Mirror movements are imitations of the movements of the contralateral moving hand. As you can see in this video here, this participant is moving his right hand where his left hand is copying or imitating the exact same movements of the contralateral hand. In the following video, we will be discussing some potential neurophysiological mechanism underlying mirror movements. With the work of Air and her colleagues in human studies and animal studies by Frio and Martin in the years between 2001 and 2007, they show that in typical development, the motor pathway, or it is called the corticospinal tract, has bilateral projection from one hemisphere in newborns. By around two years of age, a lot of the ipsilateral corticospinal tract withdraws. This leaves around 10% of the ipsilateral corticospinal tract remains with a primary contralateral corticospinal tract connection. This is why the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. In some children with unilateral brain injury, however, because of their early brain injury, it is the gray area indicated in the animation. The contralesional or healthier side of the brain is stronger. This results in a preserved ipsilateral corticospinal tract that is stronger than in typical development. Together with the typical contralateral corticospinal tract, some children with unilateral brain injury develop a bilateral projection from the contralegional side to both hands. This was studied systematically by using transcranial magnetic stimulation in healthy and in hemiplegic children. This is the first mechanism underlying mirror movements. The second mechanism is related to bilateral motor cortex activation. Evidence from the literature comes mainly from typically developing children and children with bilateral brain injury. This mechanism is generally believed to be related to the immaturity of the transcolossal pathways. These pathways connecting the two motor cortexes typically inhibit signals from one hemisphere to the other. Immaturity in typical development or early brain injury might affect this inhibition from the lesion side to the healthier side. This results in both motor cortices become active while the motor command only originates from the healthier side. This serves as the second mechanism underlying mirror movements. Given that most studies in the literature of unilateral cerebral palsy suggested some relevance between the underlying pathology and the presence of mirror movements, we hypothesize that brain pathology, such as brain lesion type and the underlying corticospinal tract connectivity, might be related to the strengths of mirror movements in our population. This is a cross-sectional cohort study. Participants were a sample of convenience from our ongoing study trials. For the mirror movements assessments, they were instructed to perform four tasks. They were asked to do hand opening and closing, finger tapping, finger individuation, and fingers walking. We used transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS, to identify the corticospinal tract connectivity. Additionally, we used MRI to identify their underlying brain lesion type. Finally, their hand function assessments were evaluated using both unimanual and bimanual hand function tests. There were 48 participants in the end of the study. Their mean age is nine years and nine months. Importantly, we found that brain lesion type may be predictive of the strengths of mirror movements induced in either hand in our population. Particularly, we found that children with paraventricular lesion are more likely to have higher mirror movement scores than those with middle cerebral artery lesion. We then went on to examine the relationship between mirror movement and the underlying corticospinal tract connectivity. 
you can see from table 2a that we did not find any significant relationship between the individual test score and the underlying corticospinal tract connectivity. However, when we use the highest mirroring score as our dependent variable, we found a significant relationship between the corticospinal tract connectivity and the highest mirroring score. So to summarize, the underlying brain pathology, such as brain lesion type and the corticospinal tract connectivity may be related to the strengths of mirror movements in children with unilateral cerebral palsy. Finally, we would like to thank families for participating in this study. We thank Deanna for her excellent work in producing the animation for this video. And please check out online for our publication on DMCN. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any additional questions. Thank you.